Hey, what up, y'all? Welcome back to Tostones Gaming. It's your boy, Will. We're back here again with another episode of Snacks and Strats. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We're doing a bunch of Tactics Ogre content. I've got a Let's Play that I'm going to start up again real soon. We're in Chapter 4. We've got a lot of side questing to do. It'll be some fun times. Right now, you're watching Snacks and Strats, which is a little informational guide video. The... Uh, playlist it's gonna help you level up your gameplay a little bit we've got a bunch of engagement in the comments below if in case i miss something the community is gonna get you covered on that and uh yeah let me know what you guys are thinking how you're enjoying it seems to be performing pretty well so i'm gonna keep doing these <laughs> so uh yeah without further ado let's get into sword masters mirror mirror on the wall what do i have to become to make my enemies fall if berserkers had anything bigger than a golf ball sized brain They'd probably be swordmasters. These units rally their allies and inspire fear in their enemies. But how well do these commanders truly perform under the pressures of war? Let's find out. I'm a preface their pre, 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 pre I'm a preface their key skills with a note on arts of war. Art of War in OV is an all-in-one action command that allows you to add stun and silence to your weaponry, which archers have access to, a whole suite of war dances that allow you to buff your allies, spread status onto your enemies, recover HP, and more, maneuverability skills for ignoring elevation and bodies of water, and lastly, a variety of scrolls that ninjas take advantage of. Swordmasters have access primarily to the war dances and they're pretty solid so the first two uh, war dances here are lion and pixie they both require 20 tp to activate and they give you a delay of 10 rt lion is going to grant your allies and yourself strengthen and dodge pixie is going to grant yourself and allies true strike and resilient train is back y'all <laughs> next next up on the list uh you got the Harvest Dance, Liberty Dance, and Tremor Dance. These are also going to require 20 TP to activate, but they delay you for 15 RT instead. So Harvest is going to be restoring HP to yourself and allies in the area. Liberty is going to be removing one debuff from yourself and allies in the area. And Tremor is going to be inflicting stun on enemies in the area. The last two dances are Lingering and the Macabre Dance macabre macabre Ma anyways <laughs> so lingering dance is gonna cost you 30 tp to activate and it gives you 20 rt delay and it's gonna inflict mass slow on enemies in the area and then the macabre dance requires a 40 hp sacrifice and it's gonna drain tp from everybody in the area or enemies in the area and it'll help you double your TP reserves. Now, without further ado, preempt is my go-to skill, guys, for Swordmasters. As you're seeing in these clips above, it's gonna allow you to preemptively strike whenever an adjacent unit attacks you. So you're out of luck if somebody is attacking you with a spear from two tiles away, it ain't gonna work. Since Swordmasters have low defense, they're particularly vulnerable to enemy attacks, but thanks to their stellar evasion, they'll usually dance around their enemies without taking damage. Stunbringer is the next skill on the list that's gonna infuse your weapons with stun for a couple of turns, allowing you to disrupt enemy lines and make it even more difficult for units to significantly hurt your army or your sword master. And then the last skill we have is Steel Stance, which many of you might recognize from the Ninja unit over on the vanilla version of the PSP game. In OV, however, Steel Stance increases your defense for a turn, increasing the likelihood of your Swordmaster surviving a hit or avoiding being targeted altogether. The best use case for this, I think, is if you've lost some territorial advantage and you have enemy archers or flying units on your tail, you can't run away, screw it. Just pop that defense boost and pray. <laughs> uh, notable skills. I cannot stress this enough, y'all. Counter hit. Just unlock it and equip it and don't question it. <laughs> Counter hit is a must. Uh, the lizards in this video are a little bit goofy because they're using blood price, which is a skill that we covered on the Berserker video. Mm, that's a good plug. Uh, you should you should be able to watch the Berserker video up here. <laughs> so we covered blood price in that video and they're basically using that and instead of following it up with a finisher afterwards, they're just attacking my Swordmaster for whatever reason. And so boom, they lose 300 HP off the blood price 
then they lose another 160 from preempt and another 160 after the fact with counter hit. Uh, it synergizes well with their average to low defense and high evasion, and so does parry for that matter. In a real world scenario though, you're gonna be more likely to get hit by a few archers, get hit a couple of times, or have to deal with uh, the occasional spell getting thrown your way, which is why I'm gonna recommend deflect instead of parry and or reflect magic those are going to help your archers ninjas or fusiliers take down those pesky units much more quickly double attack is also available if you're going to be dual wielding with your sword master steadfast grants you immunity to knockbacks ensuring that your counter hits actually land rounding out the list are going to be jump and max tp which are going to help you with more maneuverability and damage scaling finishers you know you're going to be accumulating it really quickly with preempt and counter hit so might as well make those damage scaling finishers a little bit stronger and then in terms of wards uh, i'm gonna say fear ward while you're on the front lines dealing with terror knights is gonna help you preserve what little defense you have alternatively you could go for venom ward or slow ward to help you keep that momentum right you don't want to have to be constantly using healing dance or having your other units kind of cover for your sword master because he's dying so just keep that momentum going and then slow of course is going to help you stay in the mix in terms of gear sword masters as their namesake would have it have access to both one-handed and two-handed variants of swords and katanas you could even mix and match with a side grade one hand katana on your primary hand giving you a little bit of a avoid boost and a one hand sword on your off hand allowing you to land stagger two-handed katanas provide deflect if you choose to equip that instead of parry and they do a little bit of drain tp on hit as well their side grades have an ability called draw out which is a nod to final fantasy tactics uh, where the samurai class had draw out as one of its abilities and it works the same way deals a bunch of damage to all units in a three by three area i think and it does have friendly fire so be careful with that it is a one use only and it doesn't generate tp on the enemies which is fantastic Two-handed swords deal massive damage. I ain't even gotta get into that. <laughs> and for your defensive options, you're gonna be using light armors primarily for evasion. And you got a choice. Either you can go for leggings, which further your evasion and provide a little bit more defense, or you could go with gloves for a little bit more attack. But I don't know. I, that, that sounds a little too crazy for me. <laughs> <laughs> their accessory slot is going to be great for stacking a little bit more evasion or a little bit of dexterity or strength alternatively you could try a luck ring since it synergizes well with the katanas that give you luck in terms of synergy overall sword masters synergize well with just about any team composition guys just like knights they can actually kite their opponents towards them causing holes in their formation and the inevitable death of any unit that tries to dance with them their dances allow any team composition to shine and you could use them as a commander style unit that'll maintain your army or as solo assassins which is what i prefer keep a cleric on standby you're gonna need them to keep them nice and healthy or you could do a field alchemy lobber style unit like a spellblade or warlock uh, to keep them healthy as well a caster or a flanking style units like ninjas and bardens can help eliminate pesky archers as well. To conclude in summation, what do I think of sword masters? In the words of Anakin Skywalker, don't underestimate their power y'all. They fit an aggressive playstyle perfectly but they can also hold the midline and passively support your troops with their dances and counter hits. It's easy to get a little bit reckless with them so watch your positioning. And uh, overall, they're pretty fun. I yeah, love me some sword masters, y'all. All right. If you got to the end of the video, hit me with a hit me with a Jedi scum in the comments below. <laughs> uh, next up, we're gonna be doing ninjas or rogues, one or the other. I've got a couple files set up for that. And uh, yeah, y'all, drop a like, drop a sub if you found this cool, entertaining. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.